lesson that my father has taught us is, never sit with your back to the door. Now, when I was a little girl, I really felt like my father saw me. He saw who I was. When I have a big smile on my big round face, that would make him smile. And I knew that he really loved me. There are two memories that really stayed with me in my heart that I have with my father. The first is, when I was about 10 years old, it was really a hot summer night. We stepped outside of the house to let the breeze in and to cool off. We took a walk, and it was such a perfect summer night that I started naturally to hum a tune, just something off the top of my head. My father didn't say a word. He just listened to me and walked along with me. And when we got back into the house, all he said was, very gently, that was a nice song. The second memory that I have with him is when I went off to India on a four week long vacation with my friends. Now my mom was not happy about this. She thought it was too far, too dangerous for me to go. So as a sign of protest, she stayed away in the kitchen. Even though my bags were all packed and I was ready to head off to the airport, she could not say goodbye. But my dad, on the other hand, he came up to me and he said, enjoy yourself, be careful, but I want you to have a good time. And for that, I did something I had never done before. I gave him a hug. And I held on for a good five minutes. But it's really hard to keep these two memories of him in mind because for the most part, my father is really a very, very tense man. I mean, he really didn't talk to us and we didn't talk to him. He had such a temper that my brother, my sister, and I were pretty much living in fear almost every day in our life. We didn't know what would trigger him. For instance, one time he threw a screwdriver at me when I was a little girl because I couldn't understand what he wanted me to do. When my brother was seven years old, my father locked him out of the house, just in his underwear, in the cold, stormy, rainy night. I wanted to go and rescue my brother, but I didn't want to be locked out myself. I was too scared. One time, my sister asked my father, Dad, how come we always get criticism but never praise? <coughs> praise? You want to hear praise? You want to hear things that sound good? That's just for sissies. So yeah, it's been kind of hard to keep those two memories in my heart. And then one day, I was a sophomore here in college. My father called us to the family dining room. He said, it was a really rare family meeting, unheard of. Someone must be dying. So we were all gathered at the dining room table. And then he started, never sit with your back to the door. And he told us that while we were still in China, we lived in a small rural village, waiting for money to come in from America so that we could move to the United States. One day, my mom took us to her family's house, leaving my father alone in the house. And that's when one of the neighbors who had a gambling problem on the pretense of having an accounting problem for my father to help him out with, knocked on the door and asked my father for his help because my father was known to be good at math. So as my father was sitting there on the table working out this problem, focused and concentrated, the neighbor had gone to the kitchen, gotten a cleaver, and struck it down on the back of my father's head. Then he looked around the house for the cash. So when my mom got back, she found my father at the table, unconscious, sitting in a pool of blood. Somehow, the doctors were able to bring him back within a quarter inch of his life. Because with a quarter inch more of that blade, he would not have been alive. What happened to that neighbor, I asked. Oh, he hung himself on a tree just outside the village. 
If he had been caught, the police would have shot him, execution style. And the cost of the bullet would be billed to his family. That would be very embarrassing. My jaw dropped. I couldn't believe how close to death my father had been. I couldn't believe that nobody mentioned any of this ever to us in our lives. I couldn't believe that it finally took us so long for me to finally understand why my father was such a tense, angry, anxious man, always worrying about something, anything, everything. And this story finally took And so, my father continued, that is why I say, never sit with your back to the door. Thank you.